<clears throat> Hello. <laughs> All right. Um. Uh. This is Hello. This is Christy Love, and I was supposed to um do this uh over the weekend, but I didn't really get a chance to because I had something gotten delayed. But anyway, this is my message to swing voters. Um. I'm a socially conservative uh, independent. Uh. There would qualify me as a swing voter. Um. My family, we voted for Bush twice, and uh, we're voting for Obama twice um, to make up for that. Um, <laughs> uh, I know how uh, hardcore Democrats, they have their party, hardcore Republicans, they have their party, but the rest of us, independents, libertarians, moderate Democrats, moderate Republicans, we tend out to know where we fit in. We're just sort of in the center, just kind of wandering around aimlessly like zombies. Where do I fit in? I need my home. Where's my tribe? So, um, I just wanted to um, address my people because um, I know that uh, I guess there's, a, there's a statement my mom has where she says, uh, Democrats lack unity, Republicans lack humanity, and uh, independents lack patience. And I think, I happen to think that's true. Um, <laughs> Because, uh, you know, sometimes it seems like the Democrats are always fighting and then the Republicans, they don't just, they just don't give a crap about human life after it's born. I don't even think they can think they care before it's born. I think they just pretend to so they can get that voting block of pro, uh, pro-choice, uh, I'm sorry, pro-life voters. Um, but uh, anyway, um, but yeah, I know that a lot of us in-betweeners, we just don't have patience for all that going back and forth. The things we agree with on both sides. We agree with some things on the left, we agree with some things on the right. So we're kind of, they can go either way. Um, we're like, we just, we just, it, we just care about the leader, that the person it, themselves. We want the right person for the job. Job, regardless of party. Um, so I wanted to address all my people who think like that. Um, I know this election, you may not know who to vote for, or you may be mad for whatever reasons of the current state of things, or the administration, or whatever, and uh, some of those, I know half the reasons you're probably mad are probably all based on lies, because Fox News and, and uh, all the GOPers, they make stuff up, they straight up just make stuff up, like it's not even... It's not even exaggerations. Some stuff of the stuff they say is just lies. Um, but then the rest of the stuff, you might be like, for example, mad because you wanted Obama to stick it to the Republicans harder instead of trying so hard to compromise with them 75% of the time. Because, you know, um, I guess in his good, kind nature, he thought that the Republicans would play ball because, like many of us, he confused uh, Obama, he confused the GOP for decent human beings who are loyal enough to America to put country above party, but they're not. Uh, they always put party above country. I didn't know that they were like that till, uh, you know, I got into politics and I realized, wow, you guys suck. Um, <laughs> really? Um, so that listened to one is power, so Obama got nowhere with them. Uh, so he's recently started going over their heads uh, with the realization that they'll never play ball. Um, you know, and he's getting really tough with them, and it, you could see it. A lot of things are happening faster because he's going above their heads and doing things without them because they won't help. Um, they won't help us because they're too busy trying to destroy him. So, um, if you feel like he waited too long to get tough, I understand how you feel. Um, but listen, uh, look, I, I just gotta, I'm gonna level with you. Do you want Mitt Romney to be president? Do you really want Mitt Romney to be president? I'm just, I want you to think about this. Because if you don't vote for Obama, Mitt Romney could be president. And if Mitt Romney is president, I'm leaving the country. Okay? <laughs> because then I'm going to start to think that the whole 2012 thing was true. Oh, God, Mitt Romney's president. I got to get out of here or uh, we're just going to die in, in a horrible fire. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not, like, I'm not not doing the whole hail fire thing. I'm not trying to scare anybody. I'm just saying, like, seriously, think about that. President Romney, does that feel good? Does it, I mean, do you like the taste of that? Does it feel good? No. No. Okay, it doesn't. You know why? Because he'd be a horrible, horrible president. You know why he's a horrible choice to be president? Because Mitt Romney is like a combination of George W. Bush with the whole overprivileged, born rich, good old boys club. You know, the whole rich, wealthy, I'll scratch your back, you scratch mine, liars club. Mixed with the uh, cold corporate paper pusher who laid you off. The guy who fired you and enjoyed it. <laughs> you know, as he went to his Mercedes and uh, his mansion. You know, didn't give a crap about you. Okay? He's that Wall Street fat cat that the Bush Republicans pay off and give breaks to at our expense. 
okay? That's why he made a horrible choice for president, okay? He's not the people's champ like Obama is. He's not a leader or a bleeding heart or servant for the people, okay? He's not the community organizer we all fell in love with, okay? He is the uh, Pontius Pilate governor, okay? He may be good at getting wealthy people wealthier, all the Wall Street people richer, but isn't that all the Republican leaders have been doing all this time is focused on making people rich people richer? Okay, um, you know, at our expense. I mean, that's all they've been doing since ever. You know, I was I was gonna say the two since 2000, but you know, that's only because I haven't really, really been paying attention since then. But the Republicans, they haven't been trying to fix the economy. Okay, the only thing uh, they've been doing all this time is spending all their time obsessing over trying to get Obama out of office. Okay, we've all been in a financial crisis for years now, and all the Republicans have been focused on doing is destroying Obama. Okay, while we're all suffering, all they've been doing is focusing all their time and energy on blocking and preventing Obama, our president, from doing his job. Okay, that and placating some of my fellow social conservatives with a few social issues, but I don't even believe that they really care or are committed to that because they think they just pretend to care about social issues to get voted into power because us values voters were a very strong voting block. But they try to manipulate us and lie to us too. Um, they think we're just stupid just because we like Jesus, but that ain't what Jesus would do. And Jesus told me don't play that. Okay, so you guys lost me. I mean, until y'all become the, the party of Lake Lincoln again, uh, you lost my vote. I ain't going to trust you fools. But anyway, um, they don't care about us. That's the point. My whole point is that they don't care about us. They have no souls. All right. But even despite all their obstructionism, Obama has done a lot for us all. Democrats um, have a problem with communicating all the things they've accomplished for us and telling us what they've been doing. So I'm going to tell you what they've been doing. Obama's made thousands of accomplishments on our behalf. Um, I'm going to give you some of the highlights. I know I made a song about it. You might not have heard it, but there's a whole lot of things. Um, the highlights for me, at least, I noticed, I noticed and liked the most. Countless jobs. Obama's created so many jobs. More than one year, uh, more in one year than Bush did in eight. Mick claims 100,000 jobs he created. Well, if, in that same philosophy that Obama created 2.3 million jobs. Okay, in that same philosophy that Romney's using. And Romney got rid of a whole lot more jobs than Obama. Um, Obama's uh, gotten us higher pay for women. Um, he gave 95% of Americans tax breaks. He gave tax breaks to um, small businesses as well, because small businesses is where it's at, entrepreneurs. Um, you know, he got us more student loans, um, better education, child protection laws, all kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff, okay? He cares about us. And, um, you know, he, good, Obama, he's even a good person, too. You know, he's loyal to his wife. He's, he keeps his word to his kids. You know, he's a good guy. You know, he's just a good guy. I mean, I'm not saying Romney's not good to his family, you know, but I don't even, I don't know Romney. I don't know who he is. I just know he lies to my face. Every time I see him, he pops out with a lie. Like, he doesn't respect me enough to tell me the truth. He disrespects us and insults our intelligence by lying and assuming that we're not going to notice. So he's insulting us twice, first by his, by lying to us at all, and then by expecting us not to notice. Okay? Seriously, like, I don't trust him. Or, or you know, he's a liar, a job killer, and a self-server. You know, he he's such a signally pathological liar, he lies in the same sentence two seconds later. Like, I never hired illegal immigrants, but I told the illegal immigrants that I hired to do my lawn that I couldn't keep them because I was running for office. What? Lie? That's a lie! I mean, you're... And then he's like, I never saw those negative ads that my super PAC made against you. But when I saw those negative ads that my super PAC made against you, specifically this, this, and that, I thought they were okay. Like, really? I mean, seconds later in the same sentence, and even when your point that you're making isn't even, isn't even noble. Like, how do you just... How do you do that? How do you how do you sleep at night doing that and thinking that's okay on a regular basis? Just I don't get it. I just I you know it must be a fat cat thing. I just don't get that. You know, uh, maybe because it's the whole being a good person with a conscience thing. It's just that's why I can't relate. But um, seriously, you know you you know Mitt Romney, you lie and deny before you even bother to think about what you're being asked or accused of, which admittedly you're usually guilty of. But still, seconds later, come on, man, really, come on. Anyway, um, and then how do you expect us? Romney, I want to speak directly to you. How do you expect us to trust you to be our president when you can't even say one simple sentence without lying? Like, you'll even say, like, I remember when I was afraid of getting a pink slip. Really? Right, Romney? Really? You remember when you were you were getting afraid of getting a pink slip? When? When? Oh, I know. Never! Okay, you were never afraid of getting a pink slip because you never were in the position to get a pink slip or get fired. You were never in that position because you were always powerful, Romney. Always! Okay? You were that guy who was born into privilege and money, then you were that friggin' CEO, 
paper pushing Wall Street guy, whatever. Then you were the politician who accidentally made his accidentally made his true inhuman mentality clear to us on Monday, January 10, 2012. We'll all remember that date when you said you like being able to fire people. Yeah, we know where your head is at. And by the way, um, that is not even about the, 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 the that you said that. It's about how you said it. Okay, it's not even about the context. Okay, it's it's the psychology of it. You know. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna get back to this. I'm going to take a break. And I'm going to let you guys think about what I've said. Then I'm going to come back with another video. And we're going to talk about this a little bit more. Thank you. <laughs>